Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. I'm um, sorry for my lack of videos lately. I'm uh, in the process of um, writing a uh, textbook on Feynman integration from the videos on this channel. I'm utilizing ChatGPT, of course, because I am not a writer. Um, all the work in it is obviously my own. Um, a lot of the language will be generated by ChatGPT and edited by me. Um, and I'll provide a link to that textbook when it's done, so um, all of you can get a copy of it for free. Yeah, I'm going to try to sell it. Yeah. Um, but you guys will get it for free. All right, so this is the integral we're trying to solve. Uh, we'll be using Feynman integration, of course. Um, and we're just going to jump right to this. Um, I don't think any of you would have a problem going from here to here, so I'm just going to state it explicitly right off the bat. Um, we're also going to be incorporating the sum of the reciprocal, the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the squares, squares, which is equal to negative pi squared over 12 as expressed right here. Um, so let's get started. All right, so i is equal to this is equal to this. Um, our first step is we want to find a summation representation for 1 over 1 plus x squared. Well, we know that this is true, 1 plus x is equal to the sum as n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n. Taking the derivative on both sides will give us negative 1 over 1 plus x all squared is equal to the sum as n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n times x to the n minus 1. And that's going to be true on negative 1 to 1. All right, so let's bring this negative sign over there and then get rid of that negative sign, introduce the negative one right there. All right, so now we're going to replace this with this in here. So I, we now know, is equal to, ah, no, we are in fact not going to do that right now. Well, are we? No. Let's, uh, let's create this function of t. Let's create f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t over 1 plus x squared dx. All right. But now we can say, using this, that this is equivalent to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t times the sum as n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times, oh, I'm sorry, negative 1 to the n minus 1. Um, yeah, we'll keep it like that. Uh, times n times x to the n minus 1. All right, and then of course dx. We'll bring this x to the t inside the sum, like so. Uh, we'll rearrange it a little bit. We'll make this the sum going from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n. Uh, and then we'll have the integral going from 0 to 1 of x to the n minus 1 plus t, which is just going to be 1 over n plus t. So this is over n plus t. Okay. So now we have f of t is also equal to this thing. And I'm just going to write it up here. So we have two equivalent expressions for f of t. All right. Now what we're going to do is take two derivatives with respect to t um, on all three parts of this equation. That's going to give us f double prime of t. That was the easy one. That's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t natural log squared x, because we will recover two factors of natural log x by taking two derivatives with respect to t of that. All right. And that was my motivation for putting that x to the for that reparameterization, by the way. Um, 1 plus x squared. All right, so that's the two derivatives with respect to t of this part. 
Now we'll take two derivatives with respect to t of this part, and they should be equivalent, and they will be. n equals 0 to infinity. Let's see, we're still going to have a fraction, and we're going to have negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n in the numerator and in the denominator, this will now become, we're taking two derivatives with respect to t, so this will become an n plus t cubed. And in our first derivative, we'd recover a negative one. In our second, we'd recover a negative two, making it just a positive two. So there we go, this is true. Uh, that means that um, f evaluated at the point one will hold for both of these. In other words, we know, let's just plug in f is equal to, or t is equal to 1 in both of these. So we know this is true. Now we're going to have t is equal to 1. That'll just give us x. Well, uh, yeah, that's exactly this, which is i. So we can call everything here i instead of f double prime of t. Now we plug in 1 for t here, 1. All right. So now what we're going to do is perform a manipulation on this. Let's say that this is equal to the, we'll, we'll increase our index on n by 1. Therefore, we need to subtract it. So this will just become n cubed. And this will become, let's see. We added, so we need to subtract. We'll subtract 1 from this n. We added, so we need to subtract. So this will become an n minus 2. But that's just going to be the exact same thing as if it was just n. All right. All right, so now let's break this up into two separate sums. So that means that i is equal to 2 times the sum, n going from 1 to infinity, of, let's see, we're going to have negative 1 to the n over n squared. Aha, look at that. And then we're going to have minus two times the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, negative one to the n over n cubed. Um, I believe there is some sort of special constant uh, involved in this thing right here. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that special constant is called. It might be Apery's constant. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure what it is, so we're going to leave this part alone. But this is going to be equal to negative pi squared over 6. That's the answer. Hope you enjoyed that.